have Sister Lori to come forth in her own way and give us the word of God. Amen. Let's say, teach, teach preach, preach the, word the word of God. Amen. Sister Lori. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I had asked Sister um, Ann, she should sing that song because I want everybody to think about the words to it. I give my stuff away, but, but it is not the subject, though. Um, the subject is, are you ready to receive the crown of life? Are you ready to receive the crown of life? So before I go on, I'm going to ask Elder Poppy to come up and read the scripture for me. Thank you. Amen. Scripture on today, a reading will be coming out of the book of James, chapter number one. The book of James, chapter number one, for your hearing on today. Also, I will be coming out of the book of Hebrews, Hebrew, chapter number 11. If you can get your finger in the book of James chapter 1, hold it there. Find Hebrew chapter 11. Stick another digit there. Amen. Going back to James chapter number 1, starting at verse number 12, for your hearing on today. And it reads, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Back to Hebrews chapter number 11, starting at verse number 35. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading as well as the doers of his anointed word. Okay, the subject is, are you ready to receive the crown of life? A lot of people think the crown of life means going to heaven. But it does not mean that. So since Elder Poppy read the scripture in James 1.12, the word endure means to carry on through, to put up with, tolerating, despite hardships. Okay? And the word temptation means a person or thing that tempts the desire to have or do something that you should know you should have avoided or to get away from. Or the devil will try to do something to you to cause you to walk away from God. That's the word temptation means. Okay? Now, a lot of people want to be saved nowadays, right? A lot of people want to be saved, but they did not realize how hard it was going to be. Right? They don't want to sacrifice their flesh for God. Why are we? And we don't even take the time that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Can you imagine that? He loved us that much. But how much do we love God? Do we really love God? Why not sacrifice your flesh if you love God? 
So that's why this is my subject tonight. I've been studying off and on about this subject. And late last night, I told the pastor that I had a word from the Lord. And he said, okay, so that's why I'm up today. Okay, it seems like today that people have no fear of God. Right? It seems like it. They go to church and they do wrong every day. What's up with that? I don't remember us living like that back then. Today, we're in a different generation. It seems like they have no fear of God. They do what they want to do. Wow. Some have the Holy Ghost, but some don't want to listen to the Holy Ghost. Right? But think about this. The people in the Old Testament did not have the Holy Ghost, but they served for God. Because they understood salvation, they knew they were going to live forever somewhere. So it's good to read this study because there's a lot of examples in the Bible, what they went through, and we can ask God to help us to be like them, right? Now, we need to understand there are some people, when they first get saved, they think, oh, I'm not going to have no more problems anymore. That is not true. To live holy, we are going to be tried. We are going to have test to trial, right? But the world have problems too. The difference is we can have peace and joy in the midst of it. If we have the Holy Ghost and we live right, we can go to God anytime we want, and he will come for us and he will help us. But the world... They don't go to God. They go to drugs, alcohol, gambling, sex, lying, cheating to overcome their hurt. That's the word does. But it's only for a short period of time. That's how people become addicted to it. Because they don't want to have that feeling of hurt or frustrated or depressed. They, they do those things wrong to make them um, feel better. All because they don't want to sacrifice their flesh to God. Now, when we go through something, we need to realize that people are watching us, right? Even in people in the church are watching us. Our family, our neighbors, we go to the grocery store, go to the laundromat, everywhere you go. People are watching your lifestyle. They know who are saved, and they know who's not saved. They know that. No matter how you try to justify yourself, the people still know if you're walking with God or you're not walking with God. But God promised us in James 1, he said, For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. What does that mean? I'm going to give a few examples, okay, what it means. If you are going to lose a loved one, are you going to keep on serving God? Or are you going to say, why, 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 God? And you're going to become bitter. You either go walk away from God or you're going to come to church and still live unholy. People know. They watch our life when we're being tried, when we have tested trial. I don't know why, but as soon as they find out we're going through something, the people out of the world have their, it's almost like they have 10 eyes. They're watching us. Seems like they got eyes all around their head. I don't know why, but they do. They do. They watch us. Really, they should be watching themselves. But they don't. They watch our lives. Okay. Now, while they watching your life, what are they saying about your life? We need to think about that. Now, I remember Deacon Mine and Bath. Some of you know him. Some of you does not know him. 
Deacon Mike Bear, who was the deacon of this church, um, before he got saved, he was drunk. He had ran over a child. And I'm going to tell the story as best as I can that I remember. He went to jail for that. He did. But, um, but he came out of jail for a little while, and he came to church. And when he went back to court, they sent him, and he had to go back to jail. But they favor him for some reason. They, they, I believe they know that he's very sorry. They let him out early. And what he did, he came to church and got the Holy Ghost. Okay? He served God. few years later, his own son got killed by a drunk driver. No? Okay. His son got killed. Did you know, let me tell you what really, oh, hallelujah, what really impressed me. Sister Joanne told her husband, if God would have healed him, we could tell everybody in Kestopolis, God is good. If God would have saved him or healed him, we could tell people God is good. And Uncle Mike told her, if God does not hear him or does not save him, God is still good. Because he realized that God owns everything. God owns everything. When we have children, God gives us responsibility to train them. When they get grown, they belong to God. We have them while we're on this earth. But really, we don't own anything on this earth. So they both continue to work with God. So that means that they endure the loss. That was not easy. That was a hard tissue trial where you lose somebody that you love. That's not an easy thing. Ooh, I hope I go before he does. But if God takes him before me, I have to think in my head, God not going to put anything on me that I cannot handle. Because there are some church trials that I went through that I had to talk to myself. Devil, you ain't nothing but a liar. God knew I could handle it. I'm just going to accept it and fight it. But people was watching their lives. They was watching Deacon Mighty Bass. They was watching him. They had a lot of respect for him. Because he still went on, served God, and that man of God changed his lifestyle. See, people are watching how we act. Sister Joanne lost her son three years ago. And she is still faithful to God. She is still enduring the loss. She still, but she allowed God to help her. There are some people that are stop worshiping God. See, each of us have a sample what we went through. If God can help that person, God surely can help me if I ever lose somebody. We always have to remember that God is not going to put anything on us that we cannot handle. The reason why we give in is because our flesh will scream and holler and we want to give in. Okay? Now, I remember when I was 19 or 20 years ago, Sister Robin and Sister Judy Hill. I'll never forget this. That's when I first got saved. Their grandmother died. I believe it was on a Wednesday morning, I believe. Wednesday night they were here on Bible class night. I asked them, what are you doing here? You know what they said? What a better place should be at. Young people have said that. It has stuck in my mind 
See, most of us will stay home, look at the computer, lay in bed, looking at watch TV or whatever, instead of come to church where you can get the most help. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, what a better place to be even if the church is not open. We got the Holy Ghost in us. We can fall down the ground and cry out for God. Instead of turning into a different idol, try to make something, make our flesh happy. We should make our soul satisfied, knowing that God would come for us. But we don't want to wait on God to come for us, because we don't want to take the time. It's very easy to pick up something that will satisfy your flesh, because you can get it with a minute. Sometimes you have to cry out for the Lord. Maybe 30 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour. I don't know. Everybody's different. But I'm not going to get up until I get my help from God. Because I know I've been there. God is real. God's word is faithful. And he will comfort us. Wow. Now, my husband has worked nine different jobs within 10 years, all because the job was closing on him. And our, boy, our finances was like this. Up and down, up and down. But we went to church faithful. We did not have the love of money. We went to church when we was poor. Some people stop wishing God when they lose their, when they lose their job because they're upset, they're mad. They want to take it out on God. Or somebody had a $25 an hour. Somebody's making $25 an hour. And, and they're out looking for a job. And they found a minimum wage job. Some will walk away from it so they can go back out of the world to sell drugs. Instead, be faithful to God. Thank God that you're making minimum wage. That's better than having no money coming home. That's better than going out and selling drugs. What? Oh, hallelujah. Nothing should suffer us from the love of God. We have to tell ourselves all the time, if, if I had to go through this, God knows I can handle it. He says the scripture. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, sometimes touching charges is going to be very difficult and very high, but it's up to us if we can have our mind made up. I remember Sister Helen, but I can't remember what year. I don't know, was it back in the 60s or 70s? She had sold a man from another wife, and she married him. Her pastor, her pastor told her, you have to give up your husband if you want to serve the Lord. She said, okay, I'll give him up. She gave him up and was faithful to God. Oh, hallelujah. She loved God. And did you know a lot of People have so much respect for her. She earned their respect. That means she was wearing the crown of life. She had received the crown. People saw her life. Wow, that woman changed. Wow, she gave up the man that she loved. Wow, she is safe. Wow, she is really walking with God. They saw the crown on her head. That's the way it's supposed to be when we walk with God. Are you ready to receive the crown of life? Are you ready for the people to see, wow, you are a holy woman. Wow. Damn, you, you can't tell me nothing about Sister Helen. Nothing bad. Because I saw the crown of life in her. And that's the way it's supposed to be with us when we walk 
with the Lord. Some people have an attitude. I don't care what they think. I'm still working on myself. No, we want God. We want people to see God in our lives, don't we? I want my light shining everywhere I go. Don't you want your light shining everywhere you go? Who wants to receive the crown of life? I do. Are you ready to suffer for God? Are you ready to tolerate and put up with your test of trial that I'm ready to go through this? Devil, you ain't nothing but a liar. I don't need it. Lord, I want to be saved. Lord, I want to see your, oh, hallelujah, I want to see your face in peace, Lord. You know what? That makes me feel good. When people told me, I see the difference in your life, that makes me want to fight harder every day. I have to die daily. As long as you stand yourself, you die daily. People will see the difference in your life. Me, oh, hallelujah. Last week, Don't get jealous. <laughs> that tastes good. I got half some water. Woo. Last week, I went to the store. I walked up to the cashier. I said, may I please take this outside? I want to show it to my mother-in-law. And I said, you can wash me. She said, I don't have to wash you. Go ahead and take it outside. I know you're breaking in. I said, oh, I said, thank you, Jesus. She said she knows my life. I, I went out there and showed it to her, and I said, I'm back. She said, I ain't worrying about that. I said, Lord, I thank you. She see you in my life. I was thinking that. I said, Lord, I thank you. That means something. That she said I could take it outside if I wanted to. She was not even worried about me stealing it. She trusted me because she saw something in my life. I said, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Man, make me want to fight the devil even more. Because I want people to keep on seeing the crown of life in, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, don't you want, oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't you want people to see the difference in your life? Don't you want to see that? Come on now, people in the Old Testament, they were stoned to death. They were tortured. They were killed by the sworn. Come on, we ain't suffering like they do back then. Nowadays, people walk on God over petty things. To walk with God, to go somewhere forever, we going to have tests and trials. But you know what? The world has touched a trial. Why not get saved and let the Holy Ghost to work on you? Where you can, oh hallelujah, where you can have a peace and joy in the midst of the test and trial. Come on, I thank God for his mercy, for his love. There was a time I was not living right. But let me tell you something. When God got a hold of me, when I started to get to know him, he's the best thing that has ever happened in my life. I thank God for his mercy, for his love. It's worth it. It's worth it that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. I thank God. Ain't you ready to receive the crown of life? I am. Every day, I want people to see the crown of my life. I am pretending that I have one on me. That's the way we need to do. We need to pretend that I have a crown on my head. Just like people who run for Miss Catholic. They wear the crown. We can pretend that we have one of those on our head. Come on. It's right here. It's right here. I thank God. It's time to wake up and smell the coffee and to serve God all the way. We need to have our 
But God is good. Nothing, nothing. I am ready to fight for my soul. Are you ready to fight for your soul? Are you ready to fight it? We must die daily. He's worth it. He's worthy to be praised. I am so happy that he gave me another chance to worship him, to magnify him. He's worthy, and I love him. Oh, yes, I love him. Oh, you just don't know, like I know. He bought me from a long way, and I love him. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, I worship him. I magnify him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God is awesome. It truly is awesome. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? That's the question for all who are not ready. Are you ready? Hallelujah. To wear a crown of life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So many of us have already made that choice to wear one. Amen. But sometimes we like to put it on a shelf. Wear it at all times. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, this is the altar call. Amen. If you are ready, if you are ready to wear a crown of life, amen, this is the time. Amen. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, nor filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Now is the time. Now is the time to come. Hallelujah. If you'd like to just come for prayer, we're not going to look at you as though you're in sin. That's why you're coming, but we all need prayer. So many are afraid to come for prayer because they're worried about what somebody may think. Hallelujah. 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 